Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to start a new series which I call UiPath Data Service Series. This is the first video of the series. So today we'll be discussing about what is data service, what are the key component of data services, how do we enable data services in UiPath, and next we are going to see what are the benefits that we get using a data service. Before we directly jump to the definition of the UiPath data services, I just want to quickly show you a process. So the objective of the process is to read the invoices from the folder. Then it processes each and every invoice from the folder which is in the form of PDF. After the processing is done, we have to extract the certain details such as invoice number, invoice date, rate, quantity, line amount and total. And post that the extracted data is pushed to a web application. So this is the process, linear process. I am just going to quickly show you how the process looks like and then we can see what exactly is wrong with the process and how we can implement a data service here. We come to UiPath Studio. So this is the main of the process. So this is how the process looks like. First we get the invoice path. Next we read the invoices and then we process the data. If I quickly go to the project folder, open the invoices. So I have placed three invoices here. The invoices look something like this. So I have to extract some of the details from this PDF. I have placed three invoices. Next if I talk about the web application, this is the web application where we have to fill the data extracted from the PDF. This project what you are seeing on the screen is a part of official UiPath data service tutorial. You can use the same project from their official tutorial. Let's just execute the project and see how it looks like. I am going to run the process. The extraction has started. It has extracted the data from the first PDF. It has opened the forms. So as you can see this is form web form is also provided by the UiPath. It is keying in the entry. Okay, so the first processing is done. So the next invoice, invoice 002. For the demo purpose, I have kept only three invoices. So this is the process which has already developed in the UiPath data service. I am just using that one to show what exactly the process looks like. And similarly for the third invoice. Okay, so if I go to the output section now, so you will see there all the three PDFs extraction has been completed and the data has been entered into the web form. Now that we have seen a sample process running in the UiPath Studio, let's see why exactly we need a data service here. Secured, persisted and accessible storage. So what does it mean? We have seen that we were able to read the data from the PDF file and store it in the web forms. Now if you think we have not stored the data anywhere in the middle or let's say if you want to store the data in somewhere middle we have to use an either an excel file or we have to maintain a separate database for that. So for that purpose what we can do is we can make use of data services which will provide us a secure and accessible storage. Next we can define modify and extend the business entities. So what does it mean? For that let me quickly go back to one slide. If you remember we were extracting the 10 data from the PDF that were invoice number, invoice date, company name, line item, rate, line amount and total. If you'll see all this data can be divided into three categories. So for example company name, company email and the company address are related to the company entity. Next invoice number, invoice date is something which can go with the invoices. So if I just segregate the data, so there are something such as name, address and email it is related to a client data then there is a data which is related to invoices and then there is other set of data which is related to the line items when we developed the process we were extracting the complete set of data and inserting into the data forms now if i want to do some analysis of the data i do not have that option because the data is not stored in the format which i want that is client separated by invoices separated by invoices line items so with the help of data services we can define modify and extend the business entity so what i was showing on the screen that is the client and that the company information all these entities can be defined with the help of the data services next we can define rich metadata like relationship rules and attributes so what does it mean so now we understand that we ha we can create different entities with the help of data services that is client invoices and the invoices line items and design a relationship between the entities so if you'll see on the screen you will see that how the these entities can be related to each other for example the name of the client entity is related to the in company entity of the invoices that means if you have an entity which is with a name ABC 
the same should be available in the invoices entity in the name of the company similarly the invoices number is related to the invoices line item with a relationship with the invoice number and the invoice number so that way we can design the data services where one entity is related to the other entity so the next benefit is to reduce the number of arguments which we have used in the uipath studio let's quickly jump back to the uipath studio and if i just open any of the workflow such as read pdf this is the workflow for extracting the data so if i go to the arguments tab what i see is i have almost 11 arguments which are getting out of this workflow right so what i can do is i can simply create an entity and i can just output one single entity and i can get rid of all these output arguments so that is the other benefit of using the data services i can reduce all the number of arguments and i can just output or input only a single data service entity the next benefit is prevent duplicate data for example i have already processed the record indv001 the invoice is already processed and the data is already available in the in input forms let's say we re-trigger the bot and now we want to validate if indv001 is already processed or not since we are not storing data anywhere in the middle or intermediate so we are not able to validate whether the data is already available or not available with the help of data services we can achieve that we can always query the entity in the data services and validate whether the record is available or not by that way with the help of using data services we can prevent the duplicate records the next usage of the data services is the data validation across entities which is often called the two-way matching which means that for example we have data related to the customer and the invoices so whenever we create an invoice it should be tagged to some of the customer that means we should not have any invoice that is not tagged to any customer entities that means there is a two-way matching for any of the invoices which we stored in the database or in the data services should have a valid customer available so if we are not storing the data in the data services we cannot achieve that we can achieve that but with the help of excel or any other things we have to do a lot of validation but with but with the help of data services the things is very easily accomplished with the help of the relationship between the entities so that way we can always have a data validation across entities which is called the two-way matching now that we have seen what are the benefits of data services let's see some of the formal definitions of the data services provided by the uipath so data services provide persistent data storage service bring in powerful no-code data modeling and storage capabilities to our rpa projects data services provides a business service that we can securely store and manage the data by running unattended processes to aggregate the data from multiple sources before processing into the other system for example we have multiple sources like sap or excel application or let's say some of the folder structure and we have to process the data and send to some of the destination application so what we can do is we can collate all the data and before processing the data into the destination folder we can store the data into the data services so these are the definitions which are provided by uipath so this is the link from where i have got the definition i'll post the link in the description and you can refer that next in the same link there are some of the other use cases which are provided by the uipath where you can leverage the data services so you can read them and you can just relate to it your projects and see if you can leverage the data services in your process or not let's now discuss some of the components of the data services so when we talk about data services it has four key components which we call entities fields records and relationships let's see them one by one the first one is entity so if i talk about the entities so entities are the complex object of the data services they are equivalent to the tables in the rdbms so if you are familiar with the sql structure so these are something like tables so if you talk about our example so the client invoices and the invoices line items will be our entities this is similar to the tables next what are the fields so the fields are the data inside the entities they are equivalent to the columns of the table so if i create an employee table the employee name employee id all those things will the field so if i talk about my example for the invoice entity the invoice number invoice date the company and the total will be the field similarly for the invoice line items this would be the fields we understand entity entity is related to the table and then fields they are the columns of the table 
next we have something called relationship a relationship means that a particular field can only have one reference of the another entity so in other terms if you talk about the sql if you are aware of the foreign key concept so that is the same concept which is available here in the data services so for example so the field name of the entity client has a relationship with the field company of the invoices entity so we cannot have a record in the invoices which is not related to the client name entity so that is how relationships are defined in the data services and the last we have something called the records so records are the single occurrence of the data contained in the entity so the records are equivalent to the row of data in the rdbms or in the sql so if you're looking at the screen so 8f9 sv001 sv002 so these are the set of records so whenever a data is inserted into the table or an entity we call it as records so we have a dedicated course of data services in the UiPath Academy the course URL is displayed on the screen I'll put this in the link of the description so this is the diagram I have taken from the course in the Academy so if you will see there are three entities defined client product and order so the relationship is self descriptive which means that the name of the client entity is a relationship with the order entity then we have something called field so the PKID order ID client product quantity all are the called as fields and then we have something called records so CL001 web host this entire row is known as a record so all this detail is available in the data services course which is available in the UiPath Academy now we are all set to start our journey for the data services let's say some of the prerequisite which we require in the UiPath studio to get start with the data services the first one is we should have a studio version of 2020 and above or the higher enterprise or we should have the community edition next our uipath assistant or the robot should be connected to the modern folder in the cloud account so we have two type of folders modern the classic folders and our assistant should be connected to the modern folder and the very important the data services should be enabled on the tenant so if you are not sure how do we connect the UiPath robot to the modern folder we can always follow the link which is shown on the slide I'll post it in the description and it will assist you how you can connect your robot to the modern folder for the last part on how we can enable the data services on the tenant let's see how do we do that to enable the data services on the tenant we first log into cloud.uipath.com we just log in with our account so as you can see i do not have the data services enabled as of now for my tenant so for to enable the data services i go to admin so in the admin this is the service i click on these three dots i go to edit services and in the edit services you see as of now i'm just using the orchestrator i have to select the data services and then i click on save so as soon as I click on save the it says the tenant admin this is my tenant is updated successfully now if I go back to the home page you will see I have enabled successfully the data services on my tenant so click on the data services you can see all the entities I have created in the past so this is how you enable the data services on the tenant uh, that is all for this video so we just wrap up the first video of the data service series hope you like this video if you like this video please subscribe to the channel in the coming part of the video in the series i'm going to see how we can create an entities fields how we can define relationship and all of those in the later part of the video thank you for watching and happy automation